Morning, glory, America. Bonjour, hi, Canada. Get up, get out of bed, get going. Put on those shoes, get trundling along. I'm talking to you, Mark Mandroff. Uh, Mark is our, our running, but he's out there trundling around. He can't go to the gym, so he's trundling on the streets of uh, somewhere inside the Beltway. And uh, to all of you trundlers, I do mine after 9 a.m., but I see you out there. I know you're out there. Pick up the pace. I'm going to play a little Hamilton music for you today to celebrate the news that uh, it's actually very shocking in a business sense uh, that Disney is going to open Hamilton online on July 3rd. So um, you, just right now, if you're, if you're married to or have one of those people in your family, you're going to see Hamilton four times on July 3rd and 4th, maybe five. And you're going to sign up for Disney Plus. Just telling you, just just mark that off. So, Mar- and and Captain Mark is a big Hamilton fan. The room where it happens. it's all he ever sings when he runs along. So we'll pick up the pace a little bit with our with our bumps today for him. Big show today. Bob Costas coming by. Admiral Stavridis, of course. Uh, Utah Senator Mike Lee will be here. Mike Walls, Congressman from Florida, joining us. Eliana Johnson. Richard Haas, who uh, you normally see on Morning Joe, is coming by here. Uh, if you watch Morning Joe, if you're, that, if you're that person, you know Richard Haas is on. Alistair Adele, who's the Maricopa County attorney and bringing sanity to uh, Arizona, uh, and is going to be here to bounce off uh, the early release guest I had last week. I had a guest arguing for early release because of the virus from prison. And Alistair Adele, who's the Maricopa County attorney, is not so... So sold on that. So we got a lot of show. However, let's start with some great news. Mike Garcia, who you heard yesterday and the day before on this show, the fighter pilot turned defense industry executive Annapolis grad, uh, Super Hornet pilot. He has assumed a commanding lead over the Democrat in the 25th Congressional District in California. As of midnight, uh, which was 3 a.m. Pacific, I mean Eastern time, for the benefit of the Steelers fans, with more than 142,000 votes counted, almost totally by mail. Garcia held 56% of the vote. Smith had 44% and trailed by more than 17,000 votes. That's outside the Campbell margin. The Campbell margin, John Campbell, longtime guest on this show, off and on with uh, Generalissimo on the after show, which you can get if you subscribe to The Universe, who, who never lost a race that he ran for, state assembly, state senate, congress, and then he retired after, I guess, a dozen years in congress. He just hated the flying. He said you had to go to bed with a double-digit lead, percentage terms, in California to wake up a winner because of the way that Democrats cheat. And so uh, he's outside the Campbell margin, so I think Mike Garcia has won. Now he has to run again in November, so you got to do it all again. But that's great. That's Buck McKeon's seat, Mike Garcia, fighter pilot. He's going to be on this show a lot. Looking forward to that. Other news this morning, Mike Garcia, big win. Uh, you won't hear much about that. You know, whenever there's a special, it goes for the Democrats, the, uh, the, the hard left MSNBC types and the hard left CNN types. Uh, they all spend all day talking about it. You're not going to hear about that. Rick Grinnell, my buddy Grinnell took a walk over to the Department of Justice yesterday and gave them a list from the uh, – Office of National Intelligence, of all those Obama people who unmasked innocent people at the end of the administration. Now, unmasking is what happens when, for example, I know a few ambassadors from foreign countries. I call them up. And I know that my conversation is almost certainly being recorded. I don't know that it's ever going to be listened to because I'm not that interesting and they're not that interesting. But uh, I know it's being recorded because I worked in that business for a while in the 80s. I, I know how we do things is that we monitor the conversations, especially of the Russians and of the Chinese, and they do the same to us. This is all very well known. There, there are a half dozen uh, countries in the world that listen to everything. And uh, if an American is being taped talking to a Russian, you know, Boris and Natasha are on the phone with, Joe Bag of Donuts. Joe Bag of Donuts' name is not revealed in the transcripts of what the Boris and Natasha say, because we protect Americans. Well, not at the end of Team Obama's term. They just, they, they 
spitballed and machine gunned the names around town of everyone who had talked to anyone in an attempt to create the cloud that became the Russia hoax. And Obamagate, which is shorthand for interference, intentional interference with the seamless transition of power, which is a great tradition of the republic. Obamagate is in part about that unmasking, and Grinnell gave DOJ a list. Now, it hasn't leaked yet. I got friends at Justice. I hope they give it to me, but I, it hasn't leaked to me yet. Now, I got to tell you about a story, two stories, one good news, one bad news. Here's the good news. Will summer camps open? This is a Wall Street Journal story. Turns out, some are. The reason this matters to me is because, of course, my angel tree kids Uh, I am a huge supporter of the Angel Tree effort to send children of prisoners to camp. And the more of the Angel Tree camps that open, we're not going to leave any kid behind. We're going to touch all the kids that we always get to. Normally, we send them for a week or two weeks out in the wild to get them out of of, uh, the circumstances that they find themselves in, mom or dad in jail. And, And we usually get them out to a camp. If we can't do that this year, we're going to send them a care package. Uh, Here's a quote from an Angel Tree field director. I pray before I get on a phone with a child's guardian. It's such a blessing to be able to share hope and let kids know they aren't forgotten and that they are loved. The stories are traumatic. The things these families and children have to go through, all the problems these families face being magnified. Some are without work or down to 10 hours a week. It makes them so very grateful we can offer hope and support. Now, in all 50 states, we have this organization, Angel Tree, run by Prison Fellowship. Your one-time gift of $200 will either send a kid to camp, or if the camp doesn't open, we will send that child $150 in grocery gift cards, which is used for good food, awesome new Bible, age-appropriate study material, sports equipment, a note of encouragement. It's the sports equipment they really want, right? They're going to give mom or dad the one, their guardian. They're going to say, here, go, go buy the the turkey, go buy the the hamburger, the the good stuff. You don't get to go buy, you know, candy with it. But I get the basketball, I get the soccer ball, I get the uh, the tennis racket, which is great because there are public courts all over the place. Uh, but we need your help to do that. You go to HughHewitt.com, click on the Angel Tree banner, or phone in your gift toll free, 888-206-2764, 888 Let me also tell you, though, there's a story which I'm going to talk to you about. Fearing a second wave, Cal State will keep classes online in the fall. Cal State University has 480,000 undergraduates. 480,000 undergraduates. Oh, don't worry about it. We're going to do it online. Let me tell you this. If it's not open, I'm not going. And I'm speaking to parents now and to college kids or kids who are in college. Here's what you do. College is about learning learning it's about learning it's about improving your mind and doing so away from the chatter and the clatter of your ordinary routine go live somewhere else go find a place where it's safe to live an aunt an uncle a cousin a friend out of the city in which you live and go to the library and listen to this show and listen to the hillsdale dialogues and watch the hillsdale courses do not pay good money to go to Cal State or any university that's all online. Don't do that. They will be up and running again in a year. And I know this creates a financial disaster. Guess what? You're going to have to fire some faculty. You're going to have to go in reverse order, last hired, first fired. And you're going to have to get rid of the departments that shouldn't be there anyway. And you're going to have to cut a lot of staff because universities are in financial crisis because they're tuition dependent. But you do not pay full freight for an online experience. That's like joining a golf club and getting one of those screens that you hit balls into. That was big in the 60s for a while. In the 70s, you go and hit balls into a screen. It's, oh, you're playing the Masters. No, you're not. You're not playing Augusta. You're hitting balls into a screen. And that is, it was okay for a month at the end of a semester, but that's not college. College is about being on your own and learning on your own. And you can do that at a library in a city somewhere not your own in a family not your own, in an attic upstairs. Be a student. Don't be a consumer of online courses. That's for the older people. I'll be right back, America. It's the Hugh Hewitt Show.